Great question. Excellent question. So, uh, Woody's lunchbox. So we uh, try to make uh, Andy have lunch that is totally unique and that every kid wants to trade for. You know, it's a lunchbox. So we try to make things that hit home that are like uh, savory, but also. Uh, Really? Yeah. So, 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 which is right. because it's a yeah. so it's yeah. 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 I mean, grilled, if we get any better than grilled cheese, we could have get any better than you know, the brisket and milk, and you know, even the turkey, we smoked the turkey for so, yeah. yeah. couple of things. One is the uh, Green Army, we call them the Green Army Patrol now. Okay. Because uh, this year I got a platform with men and women are part of our Green Army Patrol. So we, uh, I'm very happy about that. So we have uh, the men and women of the Green Army Patrol are able to talk and interact with you. And seven times a day we do this sort of really fun play and stop procession that has a custom music score. So I really encourage you to check that out because it's so, I wanted it to be fun because what, it's all toys, right? So it processes in and they do all these great patterns and then um, they break apart and invite guests in the circle to play. Okay. The other thing we did is a Dream Green Army drum corps. So we auditioned, um, you know, really amazing drummers from all over. And we put together a Green Army drum corps, and again, it's men and women. And they do uh, really funny stuff. So they do hardcore drumming. You know about drum corps? So and then they'll stop, and then they'll ask you to play with them. And and they go and they they entertain throughout the land. They entertain in our queue lines for Slinky Dog and aliens, rolling saucers. Um, and then another big thing that we're doing is Buzz, Jesse, and Woody are right on the main backyard promenade. And so they're visible, like if you want to give them a shout out and wave, or if you want to queue up and, and see them, uh, it's a different approach to our character program. And Family friendly, you know, as we can, and some, you know, some are a little more exhilarating. Some, are, you know, so just we 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 want, and we want to give a good variety, right? So, uh, so we, that's why they're so different. If you look at Slinky versus Aliens versus Mania, they're very all very different attractions. But it's also what makes it really interesting, isn't it? When you visit and that you have that variety that everybody can enjoy. I have a question. Sure. What inspired you for Toy Story? Toy Story, the films, of course, all the great characters, you know, and and now you know the films have been out for quite a while, and a lot of generations know all those characters and love them and. And we just thought this would be a perfect fit for the studio to do as the first, you know, immersive land that we're doing like this. And uh, I, it was a heck of a lot of fun to work on. Okay. So, <laughs> so I we read a lot for educational focus people. Uh -huh. So what would you say were your foundations to get you to where you are, That like where you needed to focus more in school? Oh, for me personally? Well, I always, I grew up, I love Disney, and I grew up always going to every Disney film and, and visiting Disney parks and that. And so... Um, so I thought someday I hope to do something like what I get to do finally and I, uh, I was designer and uh, doing design, different types of design to oh, okay. yeah, so that hopefully one day I can design something like Toy Story Lane with a whole team, you know. 
you know, and there are a lot of different people. There's hundreds of people that work on these with us. But uh, yeah, it's been a lot, it's been a lot of fun. Good again. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming to see it. I, I mean, we love it. The exciting thing is having all of you guys come see it now and, and appreciate it and enjoy it so much. So. Uh -huh. How do you work on like the theme? How do you get it to the point? Like a lot of people say that it's like you get shot on the end. How do you like get it down to that point? How do they develop the backstory? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, especially our Disney attractions are all based on stories. So, um, like a lot of the things in Toy Story really didn't exist in the film. The characters might have. But what we wanted to do is expand on the world of Toy Story. And so we start thinking up ways that we can do that. And, um, Again, the types of attractions we'd like to do, what type of toys would make a nice mix of the land. Uh, so we, so we have we uh, we do concept sketches and development. We have writers that work with us and that can write like you know storylines that inspire the artists, and then we go from there and just keep evolving it, you know, from there. So. Thank you awesome. for talking to us. Oh. All the new offerings come on land. I'm the general manager to make sure we integrate everything together. To keep continuity. Keep between continuity, them. making sure that I work closely with all the key partners, WDI, public affairs, marketing, to make sure that once we bring this product to life for you guys as guests, that you will be blown away and overwhelmed with excitement. So there's that natural transition yeah. from, say, Star Wars to Toy Story. Absolutely. So yeah, that's, that's my face now. So if we transition this project, I'll move on to the next one. You know, That's so exciting. So your job is ever evolving, isn't it? Ever evolving. So. And two, you think about it, next year we'll be celebrating the 30th anniversary for this party. Oh my goodness. So next year's 30th. Wow, man. It sneaks up on you, game, doesn't it? Star Wars all at the same time. Yeah. And don't forget, Mickey, Minnie, Runaway, Runaway Railroad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, we, part of my heart hurts still because great movie is my heart. Yeah. So yeah. I, I will try to love Mickey and Minnie as much. I will try. Yeah. <laughs> so you think about it, that's going to be the first attraction that we've ever featured Mickey in. Because everything else has been in the show. This is true. So, and you think about it, I tell people that's, that's probably that was one of Walt's visions. So okay. you'll see, you know, from that. That's awesome. So that's why, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna replace great movie right with something, let it be Nothing else can step into those shoes. What would you say is the favorite part of your job? Is ensuring the cast members are delivering excellent service for the guests. Perfect. Because that's what key it's all about. Especially getting into leadership, it's about motivating the cast. Wow. So they know their purpose and their role. Because if they don't provide for great service for you, you don't come back. That makes so sense. It's all about making sure that we lean the cast through, through all the excitement that we have. And, and just being a part of it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for talking. When you first walked into Toy Story. As you think about watching the movie as a kid, growing up watching it, and really seeing it come to fruition in the park. As you say, you are shrunk and down the sides when you walk up, and you just see Woody, his life-size fat. See that. It makes you feel like a little kid playing with your toys. That's what it feels like. So it just made childhood came back out. That's what it's about. That's what you want to do when you walk into the world. He's been developing toys for like 20 years, you know. Okay. 
but he only worked with uh, models that Imagineering used. So he didn't ride the attraction until like two days before it opened. Oh my goodness. But the coolest part for him was that seeing his toy come to life. Because he was only working on these small scale models and then for it to be surrounding him. It was such a unique I experience. I that took his breath away. Oh, he was totally geeking out by the whole thing. We talked to right after he wrote it and such, and it was just, it was neat to, to see his perspective on it. But again, we felt bad. We hope that our guests will take this one and feel that same kind of thing when they're playing beyond. You know, now, does the excitement for you ever fade walking in and seeing the oh, merchandise no. in the land? So you're wearing pins. I was a Roger Manager for pin trading for several years at Disney. And I remember the I Only Need One More. I totally remember that. I remember the, uh, the Princess. That was based on a series of uh, black and white one there. It was based on a series of window planes that people would put on their okay. cars. And we thought, well, that'd be fun if you were um, collecting pins, if you wanted to showkase, like, who's your family, or, you know, kind of thing. Remember that whole series of Island One There was one that, uh, one of my favorites was from that series was, This Is Not a Pin. And, and <laughs> I so I thought, it was, that one I thought it was very fun, because it's like, well, but it is a pin. It is a play on the Greeks. Uh, and, and just, uh, it was, that was a great memory. And that's to me, and I've been with uh, Disney now 20 years. August and 20 years, it's official. Uh, I've been with merchandise since about 2003. And, it, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to watch folks wear the items or to take these items or to see these collections online, you know, or posting, you know, their favorite Disney blog while they're drinking coffee from it. Those kind of things. It's neat because we work so behind the scenes on that stuff and then to watch it in our life. That's what we do. 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 That